Welcome back to Cocktails and Classics. This week we watched The Graduate, 1967 film, directed by Mike Nichols. I'm Dylan. Joining me, as always, is Ben, Cam, and Zach. It's not a phase, Mom. It's a lifestyle. Not that Ben, but like the other one. Yes, not Ben Broderick. Braddock. Inspector Gadget. Not the stalker. Hello, darkness, my old friend. (laughs) <laughs> I'm gonna kill myself if I hear the song again Are you going to Scarborough, <laughs> Scarborough Fair? Fair. <laughs> this week we review Simon and Garfunkel The movie <laughs> In honor of Miss Robinson's drink of choice At the bar at Ms. the Taft Robinson, Hotel LOL. The Palm Room She orders a martini So we're drinking a classic martini Gin, vermouth And yeah that's it Gross. is it a cocktail <laughs> yeah it's a cocktail it's it has, a cocktail it's just it not a good one it's also gross for some reason this one is better than the ones i've made in the past i did the recipe i had here did say put some orange bitters in there so i put like four dashes of orange bitters maybe that's helping it a little bit most time in the past like i came in and i was i was fully prepared to be like Man, I wish I had something nice to say about this martini. And this one's not actually, it's actually not that bad. Typically they suck, though. <laughs> not gonna lie. I uh, did, did not enjoy it. Oh, I guess, I don't know. Maybe I just uh, had a different mix. I did a two to one. So I did two ounces of gin to one ounce of vermouth. Oh, recipe I had said three ounces gin, half ounce vermouth. Whoa. That's probably why yours is not that bueno. Uh, I mean, yes, but also I feel like even if not, I I don't think I would enjoy it much better. I feel like clear liquors catch an unfair rap of being healthier than like brown liquors. Like people drink like vodka soda because it sounds healthier, but at the end of the day, you're drinking just as much alcohol as you would like a whiskey soda. So I'm not sure it's actually better for you. Yeah, I guess maybe you'd have to see, but I maybe like a rum because a rum is sugar based, but I'm sure most of the sugar is made into alcohol and the fermentation. Yeah, um, that's I mean, that's Tito's claim to fame is they're like, we're gluten free. All alcohol is gluten free. <laughs> that's how it works, <laughs> man. <laughs> well, I, I will say I normally love gin, but not. Not this time. Didn't like not it. Not straight gin? <laughs> I love gin, I've, but not just taking shots of gin. No, I've drank straight gin. I Honestly, I think it's the vermouth more than the gin. So you needed more gin and you're like, do a four to one next time? I, I just think maybe I just needed a chilled glass of gin. Mm. Nice little, nice little piney taste. Yeah. I have seen uh, like an old fashioned with like lavender syrup and gin. Might be good. Okay. I could see that. Should try it old fashioned with uh, maple syrup instead. <laughs> maple syrup yes. and uh, and gin. No, that would an, be gross. An old fashioned like... with maple syrup and whiskey. Well, an old fashioned well, can yeah. like have anything in it. It is oh, like a liquor and oh, like I a can. sugar. Yeah. Oh, I can. Okay, I can. All right. Zeg knows that he's just yanking your chain. <laughs> Honestly, if that's a fact, I didn't know it, and I'm not willing to accept it. I don't. I don't necessarily know if it's like a fact, but yes, you can like make like old a rum old fashioned. Those are pretty good. You can good. make a tequila old fashioned. Yeah. Yeah, but they're called something else. No. Maybe <laughs> maybe I'm out of touch with the youths, but I figured I thought they were called something else. Check the show notes below. Maybe you don't need the show notes. You know how to make a martini. It's it's like the well, most classic drink. You don't James have to lie Bond to yourself. It. Like you don't have to lie to them. They're not going to make the darn martini. Like why would they? It's not good. S- send us a picture. At Cocktails and Classics. Use the hashtag Cocktails and Classics. Let us know your thoughts. Does it suck? Is it all right? Play with the ratios, maybe. Check out The Graduate. It's on HBO Max. We're about to spoil it. All we have to, all, all Dylan's going to say is one word, one very important word plastics. plastics. It's the future. Turns out, Dude was right. <laughs> the Graduate is a 1967 film directed by Mike Nichols based off of the book of the same name by Charles Webb. It stars Dustin Hoffman and Bancroft. 
Catherine Ross, William Daniels. Currently sits in an 8 out of 10 on IMDb. It's the story of a disillusioned college graduate who finds himself torn between his old lover and her daughter. IMDb kind of sucks with the, like, quick, quick, like, descriptions. Yeah, sometimes they're pretty off. I guess a more accurate description is Ben comes home from college. He's kind of lost in his way. He is preyed upon by his parents, uh, his dad's partner's wife. Yeah, she's like a family friend. They like they, they yes. like know each other. He's somewhat preyed upon and then is like acceptant of it. And then everyone in his life is pushing them on her daughter. And so he goes on a date with the daughter and uh, then becomes obsessed with the daughter. Great movie. It hit every single plot point that you look for in like a classic Pornhub movie <laughs> or something you'd find on X videos or something like that. Music by uh, Simon and Garfunkel. Nobody wanted to riff on that? No. No, I no one does. It. I think you covered it. I think you covered all of it. So I did see, just scrolling through the Wikipedia, that adjusted for inflation, this is the 23rd highest grossing film ever in North America. That's wild. It would that be crazy. $805 million would be its... Uh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it got seven nominations at the why? academy awards why why did it get seven nominations but why yeah. um i mean a lot of people consider this one of the best movies why it won best director uh is nominated for best picture best actor for dustin hoffman best actress in a leading role and bon- uh and bancroft Best Actress in a Supporting Role, Catherine Ross. Best Writing, Screenplay Based on Material from Another Medium. And Best Cinematography. Which, honestly, the cinematography was, like, one of the best parts of the movie, in my opinion. I do uh, think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd agree with that. I read the... So the director of photography, he had shot... He shot, like, Ben-Hur and a bunch of other things before this. He had been working since, like, the 20s. He said once he got to this movie, he he knew of Mike Nichols and, like, how he really loved to like use the camera and stuff and he said oh, i used the past 40 years of my experience to do shit on this that i had never done before yeah, some of the stuff I, like he's is very inventive for 68 you know uh him in the like wetsuit going in and under yeah some stuff like that i'd never seen before like when he comes up out of the water in the wetsuit and his dad's like pushing him back down <laughs> First of all, what a situation, but I've never seen like camera work like that in a movie. That the other one that kind of stood out to me is like at the very beginning, uh, when they're having that party and it's super tight on him going through the party and all of the family friends coming up and be like, Well, what are you gonna do with the rest of your life? Like, oh my god, how yeah. we're so proud of you, the track star. It's like, geez, like it's so super, disorienting and uh super claustrophobic too. Yeah. It you know, it kinda of reminded me of just going home like and when you're in college and everyone's like oh what are you studying what are you, what are you doing i'm like you know i'm gonna go make movies oh good luck with that thanks someone <laughs> someone needs to update the wikipedia entry on the graduate because it's listed as a comedy i mean it, it is was i supposed to laugh uh yeah um really? it's definitely it wasn't really that funny of a movie i didn't think it was funny at all it's definitely a, like a dramedy it is. You know what's interesting? Yeah. I could very, I could see this kind of being considered like a black comedy. I mean, there is like, there's definitely like comedic elements to yeah, it. Yeah, there's humorous bits. There's little parts like, oh man, he's socially awkward. <laughs> yeah, I just didn't I mean, think the that... movie was funny. I, oh man, really? you slept with they my wife. It as a comedy. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. It is a comedy film. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah, I mean, it, just, it like, is a comedy film. It's not like a flat out woman. like slapstick After being comedy. Like, what do you preyed mean? on himself, the, I just the, the use of all of the slow Simon and Garfunkel songs didn't portray comedy <laughs> to you guys. <laughs> that's true. I mean, I liked the songs, but like the in the movie, kind of none of them are upbeat. <laughs> right. I thought they were just really trying to make this super sad. No, yeah, I mean, it's it's a dramedy. It's like it would definitely fit in like today's categorization of that. Like, if you think of, like, Lady Birds or, um, like, Eighth Grade, like, those sort of things where it's, like, it's got serious elements to it, but it is also, like, comedic in nature. Because there's parts of this movie, there's parts of this movie where there it's obviously set up in, like, a punchline joke way. 
I guess I can see that. Like the first time he goes to the hotel and he's like awkwardly trying to figure out what's going on. He likes he's like, oh, yeah, no, I'm I'm supposed to be there. I'm supposed to be with this party. And then he walks in, immediately walks out. And the guy's just like watching him wander around. I, I can yeah, see that. And then when he funny, takes her, under... takes a lane there later and they're like, oh, hey, Mr. Uh, I forget. Gladstone. The yeah. They're like, oh, hey, Mr. Gladstone. Hey, Mr. Gladstone. Like everyone is like talking to him and he's like, oh, I don't think there's a bar here. But they all know your name. Uh, yeah, maybe we should leave. Not <laughs> suspicious at all. <laughs> um, there's that. What when he's running after the bus, and like she like catches him running, and then he's like, "Oh, <laughs> what a coincidence that we both ended up here together." <laughs> like that. Like those bits are like obviously set up as like a joke. I didn't get that. That was funny at all. I thought it was yeah, just yeah. I think I'll, I think I interpreted a lot of the funny bits as creepy as hell. I'm I'm going to say I think with. If they used the music differently, I could see it being portrayed as funny. I just, with the way like the rest of the ambiance of the movie is, makes it feel like it's not supposed right. to be funny. I was catching some real yeah. Travis Bickle vibes in this movie. <laughs> Much less Will Ferrell. <laughs> I mean, they I don't think they were going, going for Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell but... <laughs> I do agree. I don't really understand how this is supposed to be a comedy movie it, yeah it just wasn't funny like i mean parts of it were funny i guess but like it wasn't that funny like at all really i don't know and like you said as well like the 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 um the soundtrack is like somber in most of it like it's not like i don't know just weird oh you came to berkeley and you're stalking yeah me. like what? <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> That's so And then you. she just goes along with it and is like, yeah, I mean, I might marry you, I guess. She just buys in. Never mind the fact that tomorrow? five minutes ago. I mean, I mean, I guess. I guess we can get married tomorrow, even though, you know, earlier today, I thought you. Yeah, that's what mom, I was going to say. Whatever. Like, <laughs> literally cool. five All's minutes forgiven. ago. Literally five minutes ago, <laughs> she thought that he had raped her mom and now is like, yeah, I might marry you what but also i told this other guy that i might marry yeah, him too <laughs> yeah yeah but also i might already be engaged <laughs> she was I just collecting really offers <laughs> free agency but then again back then people did get married after like a month i mean she didn't agree she didn't agree to marry him like the same day true he badgered her belligerently <laughs> I got my birth certificate. Do you have yours? Well, no, but like, even the like, hey, can you kiss me thing? That wasn't the same day. No, I think that's supposed to be portrayed as like the next day, wasn't? Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, I get what you're saying. I guess. Uh, so I read that Simon and Garfunkel were supposed to actually do like four songs for this movie, and then they wrote one, <laughs> and then he was like, "Hey, I've got this other song. Check it out." And it was, it was like, here's to you, Mrs. Roosevelt. Oh. And the director was like, okay, so it's going to be Mrs. Robinson, and uh, we're going to use your other music, too. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, Scarborough Fair and uh, Sound of Silence had already existed before this movie. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I guess maybe the somber, sad tone has to do with them having access to, like, four <laughs> Simon and Garfunkel <laughs> songs, and they were, like, the most depressing ones in their Sound catalog. Sound of Silence. <laughs> We really wanted to use one of your more upbeat songs. We really wanted to use the boxer, but we couldn't really find a spot for it. We have Simon and, Bridge... and Garfunkel at home. <laughs> Simon and Garfunkel at home. Bridge, Bridge over troubled water was great, but we only went over the Golden Gate Bridge like that one time, and it the song's just too long for that. We'll just use Scarborough Fair for the sixth time. <laughs> Which, the thing is, I would have been fine with it if they just did it like instrumental. But the fact that they kept, or like played different parts of the song, but they kept just restarting the song it. over, like they'd get like 30 seconds into the song and be like, oh, I like this song. Let's play it back <laughs> from the beginning. It's like, what are you doing? Let the song end. From the top. <laughs> we got some of your uh, your impressions already, but uh, who hadn't seen this before? Me. All of us looks like, yeah. Everyone. Oh, I'm the only one who has seen it. Okay. Uh. Well, what did you guys think? Uh, did anyone have like an 
It sounds like Cam outright hated it, but I didn't like it. <laughs> what, what I'm just gonna thoughts? throw that out there. I did not like it. I didn't apparently it's supposed to be funny, I guess. <laughs> Based on us talking, but ah, that, dude, it was weird. It wasn't really it wasn't really my cup of tea either. Just seemed kind of funky. I, however, there is like a lot of things that I did not know were in this movie that I learned like so many like pop culture references. Um, namely so much of the church at the end. I did not know that was this movie. You're uh, like, hey, the they Simpsons. stole that from Wayne's World too. <laughs> That's exactly what <laughs> I was thinking as well, soon as okay, I saw it. Okay, 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 not even that. I saw the, the church from the outside, and I went, oh, that's the church from Wayne's World. I wonder if it yeah. has the glass on oh the inside. God. And I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a second, because I think the Simpsons did the same thing in an episode. Grandpa Simpson falls in love with uh, Marge's mom. And then I want to say there's another show that did the joke of them you know, banging on the glass and yelling. And it dawned on me when I saw the outside of the church. I'm like, that's got to be it. I wonder if it has the glass on the. Oh, God, I'm just now realizing this is all from this movie. <laughs> the only pop culture reference that I recognized was like the cover, the like the leg and Dustin Hoffman standing in the background. This is one of those movies that I. I think you need to replace the plot with something different. And it's like, it could be a top 10 movie. Like the camera angles, the production behind it, I thought was awesome. I just couldn't get past yeah. the plot. I thought the acting was a little weird in spots as well. I mean, just personally, like, I don't know. Like, yeah, like maybe it was just because it wasn't believable. Like, like, I don't know, Mrs. Robinson was so, like, predatory, and Dustin Hoffman's character was so, like, s such a stalker and weird. And then, like, everybody just acted like what they were doing was, like, normal. I just didn't get it. I don't know. There's there's one other thing I wanted to point out, and I don't know if anyone else picked up on this. Everyone keeps referring to him as a track star, right? Yes. Did anyone else pay attention to the way he yeah, ran when his car that. broke down? It was not like a track star. It was so not, yeah. Very much obvious. If he went on a track scholarship, Lori Laughlin got his ass in. <laughs> that was, uh, yeah. That was Tom Brady. I was going to say, he's like, uh, they kind of ran like a... Uh... <laughs> that dude's getting drafted in the sixth You round. know in uh, Get Out? Yeah. And get out when uh, he's like out oh, in the yeah. backyard and the like grandpa's the like running around. Yeah, the, the <laughs> like that's sweeper. that's kind of how he ran, like arms well, like no, blades his, and just sprints. his no. It the, at first it wasn't like blades. His wrists yeah, were just were like flopping yeah. around as he ran. He's just like they definitely took multiple multiple takes and didn't match them up very well. No, no, but I I saw the car break down. And I'm like okay, and then I see him start running, and the first thing in my head is. I thought this guy had a track scholarship. Why is he? Well, now he's Actually, been smoking and stuff. My my other thought was Jarrett would correct this kid's form so <laughs> bad right now. I can just, I could feel it. Yeah. Did not sit right. The plot was weird. Some of the acting was weird. The only good parts of this, even though it did not match the tone, the only good parts of this movie was, in my opinion, the Simon and Garfunkel music. I like it. But like. The camera angles were, like, good. Like, it was shot really well. It was just not, yeah, it was, I don't know. I can't really place it, but the entire thing together was super odd. So so you say he's stalkerish, yeah. which, like, some of his actions, yes, are. But they are, like, immediately connected. Like, he's, like, a total ass to her at the beginning. He takes her to, like, that burlesque show or whatever, and the lady's, like, bouncing the tassels off her head, and she's crying. But classic, then, like, very classy. Yeah, well, I, he's just trying to be an ass because right. Mrs. Robinson told him not to date his daughter. Yeah, he's trying to neg her into <laughs> not dating again. Total chat. And so, <laughs> after that, once he, like, apologizes and kind of just, like, ki like outright kisses her, which was kind of weird, they're, like, infatuated with each other again. Yeah. And at the end of that date, they're, like, in love or something? I don't know. They're, like, super, like, yeah. infatuated and they're, like, let's go out tomorrow again and and then it's like, so everything is going good until he is like, oh, yeah, I slept with your mom. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. And then that'll do it. Hey, remember that affair I had with that lady who was married with a son? It's not a son. Who Wait, who was it? Stares at the mom behind her. <laughs> 
which that that's uh when when it racks focus back to the mom and then just stays like out of focus on her and like slowly comes back oh, yeah. like, such an iconic shot in this movie good and story a straight up like horror movie shot kind of bold too she's like really out of focus but she it, like it's like oh she gets it oh it's my mom yes yeah. like when she comes in focus she's like get yeah the that's a good example of storytelling okay. with the camera interestingly enough i kind of feel like her feelings don't ever go away in a sense it's like yeah oh like i'm pissed at you for my mom thing the mom like lies to her and is like oh i got raped he informs her after being yes. a stalker <laughs> hey she's totally lying to you blah blah, blah and she's kind of like back into the bin train yeah i don't know and so it's like whole situation's weird i don't know i yes it is like it is like a murky situation i will agree there but it's like i don't know i feel like her feelings just never they didn't like go away but none of it was believable Um, who acts like that after one date and who would be willing to forgive someone for doing like that to their family yeah, like, did I just not get this movie? I just don't. I just did not like it. I didn't think it was good. I don't understand how it's like one of the hot top rated movies. I will say on my second viewing, it's it's a lot better. The thing that I think is missing for me in this movie is why is the daughter Elaine so attracted yeah. to Ben? Yeah, like I like they try to set it up like he's this big scholar and a track star, but like. I don't they make think him they unbearable. overcome. Yeah, they. He's he's extremely socially awkward, which may be not his fault, but they don't set him up well enough to overcome the idea that he raped her mom, he, yeah. or even even had an affair and with broke her up mother. her family. I feel like. Yeah. I, I feel wonder like if there's more to the story a, than, a cut than we and dry. know. Yeah, like that's probably something that gets explained in the book, right? But. Maybe there's a high school crush there because they knew each other before. Yeah, so maybe that that is something that just totally is. He literally says, but he says to his mom and dad that he doesn't like her, and what you haven't seen her since high school. Yeah, but I just and then he basically goes on and who knows? Maybe that's just because he's trying to deflect. But like, they kind of make it seem like they were not in the same circle. It doesn't seem like yeah. They made it seem like they didn't know each other in high school. Really, like they were just acquaintances. And then they, yeah, I I agree. I don't think they did a good enough job of setting it up where it was believable that she would still be into him after all that. And after she agreed to leave and marry another person that she would then leave him at the altar for him last minute. Well, the other guy was Mr. Makeout King or some shit like that. So he seems like quality, dude. I mean, I'm not saying he's quality, but (laughs) I still. I will just say, like, when when we first meet, when we first meet Ben... He's this naive, kind of awkward. He doesn't know what he wants to do with his life. And, like, relatable. Like, I feel like people can relate to that. I don't know what, like, I'm I'm finished with school, but I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know what I'm going to do in the real world. And then he's he's preyed upon. But I feel like there's just not a lot of character growth. Like, all of a sudden he goes from this kind of awkward unsure person and then he just kind of acts like a dick am i the only one who got that vibe where like he just kind of seems like an asshole i don't think there was um any character growth at all for ben it's just a matter of like where he gets pointed yeah like he was uh the socially awkward don't really talk to me i want to go out check the car during a busy party type of guy and then the mom started uh trying to molest him And then uh, he backed that off for one night, and then immediately that was like the direction he was pointed in. All of a sudden, well, it wasn't all of a sudden. Banging shit out of the mom. Inadvertently, Mrs. Robinson's husband pointed him in that direction. (laughs) Yeah, but like over, he was like, like, "Yeah, you should enjoy being young." That happened. Do something wild. (laughs) So some like, okay, I'll do something wild. Go get some affairs. (laughs) Come see my daughter. (laughs) Yes. People just steer you should him bang like my daughter. <laughs> it's really a good tale of bullying. Like he was about to get preyed upon by the mom, and now he's gonna take that and prey on the <gasps> daughter. <laughs> and it works out in the end because they like run away from her wedding. But does it work out in the end? Fall in love somehow. Okay, okay. 
Yeah, when you guys saw the last shot in the movie where they're sitting on the bus. Ooh, I was going to bring this up, I think. Does that look like a happy ending? Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't. And Sound of Silence plays again. It's not. And their smiles yeah. fade yeah. at the end. Yeah. I feel like they're starting yeah. to regret the right. decisions they, well, they, that they, they made. Kind of, yeah, they kind of look down, and then like Ben just stares straight forward. She kind of looks at him for a minute. He doesn't look back at her, and then she just kind of turns her head, and they just look bewildered at what they just did like we just fucked up completely that's just the yeah. pre-beer look like do you want to crack a beer like yeah i want to crack a beer i don't think so well and with the use of sound of silence at the end too yeah i'm wondering how much of it is the people in the tr- like in that bus with them who are also like everyone was just still staring at them at that point so is it like just uncomfortability with them being in the bus or is it them starting to regret that decision? Because I was going to ask that same question, Ben. I feel actually. like it's the regret. Because I was like, I mean, huh. to me, I saw that and thought Sound that. of a Silence is a weird choice here. I well, just it starts with that, even right? Even if, like, the people were, if the people are staring at them, like, regardless, I feel like if you've been apart or whatever and you're that longing to be with one another and finally, like, you got away, just the two of you, you feel like you can be happy you wouldn't have the look on your face of like, it literally looks like they just had the realization that I just yeah. fucked everything mm-hmm. up. And, and I will say this, it kind of thinking about it now, I think it goes back to the fact that Ben doesn't know what he wants. Yeah. So yeah. now he, he's, he kind of, like Zach said, he was pointed at this one thing, this singular objective and now that he's gotten Elaine, he's on the bus and he is, I feel like his thing is, I don't know if this is what I want, but it, it's kind of too late. And I feel like Elaine feels that too, where when she looks at him and he's just not looking at her and she kind of thinks like, maybe he's not as into this as I thought. Also, now I have to go get an annulment because I am technically married. I have to go get a blood test first, actually. <laughs> Do you have oh, your well, birth yeah, certificate? I did not know that was a thing. I was no, like, blood tests. That I, a California I Googled thing? it. What? Is that a California thing? No, that was like a no. thing thing. It was a thing. I think oh, it was back in the eugenics um, days. <laughs> the United States was trying to practice eugenics during Eisenhower's presidency. Oh, yeah. then. I don't think that's what it was related to, but maybe. Well, I'm just no, asking I the think question. It had to do with a little context. Most um, of the question, though. I don't remember what it Montana had. still requires a blood is test. Is it relative? Is it so you don't marry relatives or is it like diseases type thing? I maybe think it's supposed to be. Because I know there's diseases, the whole sickle cell thing. It, here's mental mental floss. It has nothing to do with tying the knot with your long lost mother, brother, or close relative. It does, however, have roots in what was considered a topic nearly as uncomfortable as incest, sexually transmitted disease. Oh. Back in the 30s, the raising rates of syphilis were causing a public health crisis partially because the subject was so taboo. We might virtually stamp out this disease were we not hampered by the widespread belief that nice people don't talk about syphilis, that nice people don't have syphilis, and that nice people don't do anything about those who do have syphilis. I got it. I, I got it all. It's that in back in these days, they were still pretending that people were not soaking and boning <laughs> pre-marriage, so they wanted to get blood tests to see if their genitals oozed, and if they did, then you couldn't marry that person because then you would do the sexuals, and your genitals would ooze. Ew. So I just <laughs> want to say this kid just used uh, soaking and banging. <laughs> no, I think he said boning, and then. F- do you say banging? And I don't Jim know. Oh, soaking you're right. Boning. I don't know. You're right. I think he said soaking and boning, <laughs> and then proceeded to mention ooze, oozing genitals, um, all in the same, the, all in a, the same. And nobody monologue. stopped it. No one stopped uh, it. <laughs> there's a population. Cut it. Our, cut our cut Amish. Why did you our, leave this in here? <laughs> our Amish <laughs> listeners are going to understand perfectly what soaking our is. Our Amish listeners and the non-Amish <laughs> and the non-Amish <laughs> will easily Google it and figure it out. Everybody this says, after, this, after the syphilis crisis was over, some states pivoted to using premarital blood tests to check for other diseases like tuberculosis, rubella, and HIV. The problem, however, was that the practice didn't really actually uncover that many cases of any kind. 
Uh, they reported that the nation as a whole spent around $80 million on premarital syphilis tests and found only 456 positive oh cases. Oh, my God. And according to a 1989 study in the Journal of American Medicine, uh, prospective newlyweds in Illinois spent $2.5 million to test for H- HIV during the first six months of the program, and only eight of the seven, uh, 70,000 cases came back positive. Wow. They should have instead um, sent those tests and made them like like a requirement for the south because then you would have at least caught people that were like brother cousins brother cousins together <laughs> brother cousins <laughs> whoa brother cousin hello brother cousin sister Not- sister cousins too i guess the old to re- the old as the Uncle reflexive Grandpa. property <laughs> Uh, uh, one thing I did find interesting. Shit, your papa, uh, you can't be in. <laughs> Stop that, so Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> Lord, can we just talk about the fact that Mister Feeney was Ben's dad? Whoa, 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 yes. whoa, whoa. Okay, you just nailed it for me. I was like, <laughs> I know that face, but who the fuck is that? I didn't know that. Feeny! Feeny! <laughs> yeah, I saw him the first time on the screen, and I'm like, that voice sounds familiar. And then it was like, it's really dark, though, and I can't see what he looks like. And then as soon as the light shone, I was like, oh, it's Mr. Feeny! <laughs> Which is crazy if you think about the fact that, like, he was born in 1927. Like pre pre the depression, prehistoric. So figure and mind you, he was <laughs> doing the the Boy Meets World spin-off up until 2017. Did he die? No, no he's still, he's still alive. alive. Oh, the dude's about to be the voice of Kit soon. and Night Rider. Yeah. Oh, is he? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this guy's been sprinkled everywhere throughout the oh, 20th dude. century. See, speaking of sprinkled everywhere, have you guys seen the recent trend of ever of it's like soaking and banging? Because no, I the silhouette that. challenge. No. I've seen a lot of those. What's his name? Is it Ethan Park? Is that his name? Um, I I don't know. It's the guy that plays Jimmy Ethan Woo Hawking. in, um, in like Wandavision and stuff. Randall Park. Oh, the Marvel guy. Yeah. Yeah. He's in so much shit. It's insane. Like, look at his IMDb. Yeah, he's a that guy. There's, like, a trend recently yeah. where it's, like, pointing out a bunch of shit that he's in. He's in, like, commercials. He's in TV shows. He's in yeah. movies. Like, he's literally in, like, every goddamn he was, thing. He was Asian Asian Jim in The Office. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm just saying it's, cr- like, he, he, like, he's in so much stuff in the past 20 years. It's crazy. Wait. Whoa. Well, I did not do a deep enough dive in this IMDb page for the additional cast. Um, the bellhop in the in the hotel lobby, one of them was uh, BJ Honeycut from Mash. Cool. Like that. The, yes. Okay. That is a show I know that I know doesn't of. mean a lot to you guys. Oh, no, for our Mash listeners, like, they're gonna love that. But like that. That's for a, all the people named Ben that listen to this podcast. For gonna Ben's love parents it. who turn into the you know into the podcast. People like Mash, all right? <laughs> Yeah, isn't it still like the most watched uh, finale? I think yes. so. Yeah. No, yeah, you're thinking like of the big it's bone finale theory. is the most tuned in television ever. I think the only things that have beaten it in terms of most watched TV events have been like Super Bowls. That's it, or Olympics or something. Nah. Um, I don't know about that, but I know Super Bowls have beaten it. But. Most list of most watched television broadcasts. I'm looking at the United States. Uh, Mash is number nine on the list. There is eight Super Bowls ahead of it. Wow! And the Richard Called Nixon reg- the Richard Nixon resignation speech. You know what is further down? A little bit under Nash, like or Mash, like ten spots down. The pursuit of O.J. Simpson. The oh, are you just looking at? Are you looking at events? Oh, I'm looking chase. at like broadcasts. I'm looking at most watched broadcasts on Wikipedia. Really? I'm there too. I don't see any of that. 95 million people tuned in to the police pursuit of O.J. Simpson on June 17th, 1994. That's insane. This episode brought to you by the Ford Bronco. <laughs> no, I see. I see. Brought to you um, by goat mode. <laughs> go anywhere. All well, terrain. the top one on here is the Apollo 11 landing. 
Like the very, very what about top. The Apollo 13 landing. And then Super Bowl, like 2010 Super Bowls, and then Nixon resignation speech, and then two more Super Bowls, and then MASH. The wild thing about the O.J. Simpson one to me, it had 95 million viewers, is that that was like a lot, like that was like obviously not a planned event. And you still got 95 million people to tune into that event. Is everyone just calling each other? It just happened. Everyone was like, holy shit, you got to turn on ABC or whatever. You got to turn on the news. Holy shit. (laughs) They're chasing that famous football player around. What is happening? And he had his wife's head in the trunk the whole time. That's not true, right? (laughs) <laughs> no feels like they would have convicted no. him if that was the case <laughs> they couldn't because the glove didn't fit that's that true was the they must have quit the movie. <laughs> he just happens to have the head in his trunk but this glove <laughs> just does not fit on his hand well, but due did, to investigator incompetence somehow he got off <laughs> he had uh gloves on so you couldn't match the fingerprints from the head also uh ben super like this must have been when was like son of sam because uh no, this is very. Son of Sam was <laughs> very like the seventies, maybe. Okay, it's very serial killer vibes when he's like, when she screams, she's like, "Enough!" And yeah. then like, oh, everyone comes man. up to the door, and he's just like, has it half hatched, and he's like, he's like, "No, everything's fine. She just got a little worked up. Everything's fine." Here, the, she's see, right here. here look, here look, she's look, drinking, she's drinking water. water. Right. Seventy six. Okay, yeah, because like he's just like <laughs> creepy as hell. Ever like the boys are like, should we call the cops? Mr. McCleary is like, back off, boys. Go to bed. It's all right. I want you out of here. And then he stays for a long yeah. fucking time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, he starts packing a bag, and then he just never leaves. Well, because she tells him. Mr. She tells him. shows up. They get in an argument. Then he's like, I want you out. And I'm like, wait a minute. I thought he was supposed <laughs> to be out months ago. You seem like your threats are empty, old man. Well, then he threatened to call the cops. Yeah, he's got a weird relationship with his boys, too. <laughs> I just like to know what I just like to know what my boys are up to. Those are the most sane people in the movie. Like they hear somebody crying for help, they run up, they threaten to beat up the guy who's like whatever, causing the issue, and threaten to call the cops. And like, they're the most sane people in the movie. Okay, I will say there was one other thing I laughed at. I'm looking at the quotes. Um, is when they're talking about where she proposed. Ben asks Elaine where the other guy proposed. And then he just yells, oh, God, it wasn't in his car, was it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, what a dick. Like, uh, I'm sure she doesn't know, but, like, God. she doesn't. I don't think he was being a dick. I doesn't. think he was concerned. I think oh, he felt no. bad for Mrs. Robinson. She got boned in a Ford, and <laughs> he wanted to make sure the same thing didn't happen to Elaine. But I just thought that was hilarious, and he's like, "You, it wasn't in a car, was it? Like, oh, my God. <laughs> How many scenarios went along in this kid's life where they just didn't realize that something was a little too off? many? I don't know. Let's be honest. When when anytime he tries to bring up anything to his dad, his dad just forces him yeah. to do it or blatantly it's, ignores him. Yeah, it. There might have been cries for help pretty early on that they just straight up ignored. Yeah, I mean, you're in a situation where you're 21 years old, you just graduated college, and now your parents invited their friends over. In the middle of, like, July or something. And they have you put on a scuba outfit. And you're supposed to go diving for... It's like entertainment for these people. In six feet of water? Can we... Do we know how tall Dustin Hoffman is? Because it looked like he had a good three, four feet of clearance above his head, by the way. Oh, my God. It it looked like he had to be, like, two feet tall. Yeah. It was... <laughs> his dad says it's six feet of water. And you look up and it's like... You could fit almost one more Dustin Hoffman on top of him <laughs> in order to breach the water. Yeah. He's five, and I know, five and a half. Okay, so. I was say, I know he's not supposed to be a really tall guy, but still, like, c- come on. Come what on What was the now. form of entertainment there? Like, hey, yeah, uh, I need you to come over. No, yeah, no, no, it's fine. My boy uh, is back. He's out of college, and uh, I got him this six. We're probably outfit. having a barbecue. Yeah, well, we'll, well, they, we'll it fire was up the grill, birthday. but. Come, come, come! Watch him. It was his twenty-first birthday. That's why they were all there. But yeah. why did he? And need the to main go event was him and his. Because when you're rich and you have fuck you money, that's what you do: make people watch your potato kid <laughs> <laughs> jump in a pool. <laughs> like, that's that's it. Um, I will say one other thing. Looking at this, things that take me out of movies is when there's no area code and a phone number. 
<laughs> they just expect really you to know. when even though they when didn't ben... use area codes in the 60s i know but it just i i, I don't really think about it <laughs> until it's noticeable like Ben, he, Ben's like, called the I totally service. forgot the, the half of my life where I didn't have to use an area code. <laughs> how long how long do you think it's been that area codes have been around, Dylan? It's been a lot longer than half Dude, my I, life. Dude, I didn't have to. You did not have to type in an area code if you were calling someone in the same area code as you. All this is proving is a Dylan's kid. a big loser. He doesn't know anyone that isn't within five miles of himself. Um, my area <laughs> code covers... <laughs> outside of five miles within himself. My area code covers... Uh, majority of northeast alabama so god who would you even want to call there <laughs> if you don't live in michigan where there's like fucking six within like five miles of each other uh most states are kind of like if you don't live in a big city most states are like divided with very large area codes hmm. i see i remember having to like remember to type it in at a certain age in like my like early teens yeah oh mine wasn't like my teens i feel like i was in elementary school and we had to start typing them yeah i remember it being an option but i didn't have to do it i think that was because i only called people who were down the street from me hey sydney can you come over <laughs> my mom says you can hang out i have a dope pool i'm gonna put on my scuba outfit i'm gonna go get in the pool if you want to come over and watch <laughs> it's gonna be a whole show i'm just gonna kind of sit there but it's gonna be awesome <laughs> just gonna like, stand under the water <laughs> it definitely was not my my teen years it looks like it was 2001 it became required so uh, oh okay. yeah uh-huh yeah half my life half yeah uh-huh that's what i thought that's what dylan tried that's telling me said. dylan said the half your life you didn't have to use it oh, yeah fuck that. seven it like years of your years. life <laughs> yep. til dylan's only 14 years old <laughs> Ed- edgelord dylan which makes sense, makes sense. he's He's hitting his 14 edgelord years. I am 14, and this is deep. <laughs> you guys just don't understand Heather's. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how we got from Dylan, the zip code uh, conversation. Well, we will about Heather's Dylan. yet again, but Dylan, here we are. Dylan loves soaking. Oh, my God. This, this article <laughs> says 2014. That's wrong. I, I, don't I know. guarantee it, you that if it's 2014, it's in like and backwoods was, Kentucky where they barely have phones. It too. is. It is Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! It's like if you're fancy, you use the telephone, but uh, you really could just throw a rock at the next house. They just got the internet like eight years ago. <laughs> Mitch McConnell doesn't like change. They they put into the operator operator the dudes like switching the fucking board. Jim, do you hear? You gotta type in three extra numbers now. God damn it! <laughs> Fucking Mitch McConnell. <laughs> we send him to the send him to the Senate every year. <laughs> Barack Obama make me change my phone number. Thanks, Obama. Goddamn Obamacare. <laughs> <laughs> Messing with my phone numbers. Gotta put a fucking one in there now. And fucking area code. <laughs> First my phone numbers, next my guns. We can't let that happen. Oh, God. Two's dumb. The number I care about. My favorite amendment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this episode is going to be fucking all over the place. And I don't know. I don't know if there's even 40 minutes of usable content. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we still haven't gotten to the quiz yet. Uh, oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> We're going to hit up some ads real quick. And we'll come back for Zach's quiz. So this week's podcast is brought to you by Surfside Sips. They make high-impact glass straws. They're a family-owned company. And and what's better than saving saving the turts, you know? The turts? <laughs> the turts. <laughs> you know, I'm one of those people who hates using paper straws. Paper straws fucking Paper straws suck. suck. I love the worst what solution. they do. I love the, that we're, we're minimizing the use of plastic straws. I enjoy that. Paper straws suck ass. They suck. They're the worst possible solution because turns out, guess what? Paper and water don't fucking mix, okay? I don't know who came up with it, but it doesn't work. Even though even though they put coating on it to try and help, it doesn't work. It just gets soggy and you end up throwing it away anyway, and that's just more waste. And so But you know what doesn't get soggy? Glass. Yeah. Glass straws from Surfside Sips. And if you want to get some glass straws from Surfside Sips, you can use coupon code cocktails and classics spelled out that's cocktails a and d classics for 20 percent off your order and if you're looking for a business to support during this time 
Seems like a good idea. As always, Zach takes over, puts us through a trivia quiz. So, Zach, what do you got for us on The Graduate? I have some real stumpers for you. Real difficult. Which questions. cocktails and classics member sat next to Dustin First Hoffman question, in a How bar? did Elaine fall in love with Ben? And what planet is that possible? <laughs> a, Venus. <laughs> the B. All right. Uh, question number one. This one you had to pay really close attention to get it, but it's doable. How many? How many fish were in Ben's fish tank? A, <laughs> eleven. B, thirteen. Or C, 15. All the numbers are so goddamn close. <laughs> <laughs> you like, I'll the find fish? the number and then go within two of it. Let's say 11, 13, or 15. God damn. I was going to say like one. <laughs> I promise you there's uh, more than one fish. I was not. I definitely wasn't going to say one. There's at least, yeah. a, there's a, at least 10. <laughs> oh, really? Well, there's at least there's, 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 there's at least less 11. than twenty. <laughs> there's, there's at least, at least 11. eleven, and, and at up most to 15. fifteen. Speaking of which, I will say fifteen. I guess that's a crowded fish tank, but we'll go with fifteen. I'll say eleven. There was enough room for keys to fall into the fish tank and not hit anybody. So, I was also going to say eleven. Uh, I'm trying to picture the scene in my head and count them all where it's like the fish tank. <laughs> ben, ben has a photographic Ow. memory of fish and, and goddamn rain man over here. <laughs> hey, how many nice, jelly beans are in this nice fish Hoffman. tank? How long have you had that uh, Hoffman res- reference fucking holstered there, Cameron? How long have you been holding that one? It just came to me. I forgot how I forgot he was even rain man until I just said it. You guys need to go back and rewatch the scene when Mrs. Robinson enters the room because it is clearly 15 fish in that fish. Nice. Wow. That's what we like to hear. It's a lot of what little tiny guess. fish, you know? There's a couple big fish, like those big triangle with the striped fucking fish, but a bunch of little fucking uh, fish, too. Like that one guy in uh, Finding Nemo? The, the one Gil? with the scar? Gil, yeah. Alrighty, so that gives Cameron the one-point lead. Question number two. During Ben's first hotel rendezvous with Mrs. Robinson, the desk clerk asks him if they're or if he's here with the Singleman party. Now Ben clearly wasn't with the Singleman party, but he also wasn't a part of the conference that was going on in Suite Forty Eight of the hotel either. What was the name of that conference? Ugh. A. The Stenographic and Secretarial Service. B. The Superintendents and Supervisors Service. Or C. The Stomatologists and Sentient Service. That last one's so fucking weird. Like, a lot of, how could you have come up with that? I almost S's. said it wrong, too. I almost said Sentinel <laughs> Service. <laughs> it's a shit ton of alliteration. What was the first one? Stenographic and Secretarial Service. Oh, see, those ones go together. What's What was the second one? Superintendents and Supervisor Service. I see. I'm going to say A. I don't really get what... I mean... It could be C because I don't. That feels like you wouldn't have made that one up, but I'll do A. I will go with C, the stenographic and sentience seminar. What was it? Stomatologist and sentience <laughs> service. Yes, that one. <laughs> C. I'm. I'm gonna say A as well. The stenographics and whatever. Secretaries. Secretaries. Uh, yes, it is A. Uh, and I did pause the movie a lot to read that board because parts of it come in focus. Um, it's in like a close up as they're zooming into the desk clerk. You can see it off to the right. There's wow. a conference in Suite 48. Jeez. All right. So that gives Cameron a one point lead over Ben and a two point lead over Dylan. Heading into question number three. Dylan's fucked. <laughs> We should weigh the questions. Question number three should be worth three points. No. Question number three is going to be worth a lot of points because I worked very hard on this one. This is the hardest I've worked on a question since the Hubie Halloween episode. Thank God. During the strip club scene, 
How many complete rotations of the nipple tassels do we see? This only includes the tit tassel revolutions where we as the movie viewer can see both tassels rotate 360 degrees around each breast. Oh my god. Is it A, 139, B, 140, or C, 141? Why are the numbers so close? <laughs> Why is so close? You could have spaced them out and we still would have no idea. Yeah. They could have made it like 10. This this would have been a great closest Could have made it like 10, 100, question. or 1,000. And I wouldn't know. None of those are right, know. though. I mean, yeah. Well, Cam, you get to go I first. Mean, You're in the lead. I'm in last, so I'll... It's just 139. A. What are the odds that it's even, right? But I'm gonna go 140. Fucking Christ! I did you actually sit and count? Yeah. One. How much fucking had, time do you I have? I had an on Excel your hands? spreadsheet, and I started it on a blank sheet at row one, and then every time they rotated, I fucking tapped my arrow down key, <laughs> <laughs> and I did it twice just to make sure. Oh God. I'm going to say 139. The correct answer is 140 times. Nice. Wow. Three for three. Let's go. I did it. It's been a while. Camera got the sweep. We'll see if he completes the tradition next week. Stay tuned, and ladies and gents. No, no I, think I, I think I broke it. I think I broke it last week. With everyone else here, having not seen the movie, we're going to get their initial reactions, and I'll give you a my updated opinion on The Graduate. This one is interesting because I think this kind of stretches my rating system a bit because, like, I did not like this movie. I didn't think it was entertaining. I didn't think it was funny. The plot line was weird and creepy and not in, like, an entertaining way even. Like, you can have a creepy movie, but they presented the creepy plot line as, like, a normal thing that people do, and it was weird. There's just, oh, yeah, I don't know. I just, it did not click with me. But again, it's like, it's a classic movie. It's one of the highest, you know, it's like top 25 or whatever. So for me, this kind of stretches it because it's like, you know, where, how do I weight that? You know, like definitely was not my type of movie, but it's not that it's like an, you know, it's not just because it's an older movie. Just, I don't know. I didn't like it. So like, is like a really, really awful rating appropriate? I'm just not sure. So I hesitate to do this, but I'm going to give it like a four and a half. I really did not like it. And that might be my lowest rated movie that's not Hubie Halloween, but so be it. Uh, my first time seeing the movie. I thought this movie did a lot of things that were super unique. Uh, we've talked about the camera angles. And I want to touch on that again because there's stuff done in this movie that I've never seen before. Um, or maybe I've seen in completely different genres. We talked about the pool scenes a lot, uh, the scene where Ben is looking up with the glasses on and you get that camera perspective, which you get a lot in this movie of here's Ben's direct line of sight. But there's other things too, like when, when Ben sort of corners Mrs. Robinson after the, uh, the Elaine Miss Robinson altercation and the camera is on her standing in the corner and it's just a complete zoom back with her in like a white background. That is straight out of like, like an old school horror movie. Um, a lot of things like that that I've never seen pulled into a movie like this or done very well. Like Cameron, I just couldn't get behind the plot. Maybe it's a time thing. I just don't get it. Uh, like culturally when the movie was made, um, the plot fell short, but I thought the making of the movie was really well. So for that, I'm going to give it a five. I would love to see the movie remade. This is a movie that I think if they dropped in a new plot or maybe just updated it, it would be, like, fantastic. To echo Zach's sentiment, uh, yes, I also love the cinematography in this movie. I love Simon and Garfunkel. Um, I thought their music got a, a little repetitive. Like I said, I feel like they could have done a little bit more instrumental. Like, it was really cool when they, they kind of switched it up and gave, you know, kind of two guitar instrumental music in the background in that i thought that did really well um scarborough fair playing as an intro six times in the movie was not my favorite thing the other thing i just did not like about this movie is i 
feel like as a viewer, you're supposed to, I, I feel like it's supposed to be that you're rooting for Ben, but they give you no good reason. I feel like to root for Ben as a character. He reminds me of Ross from friends for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it's just the exact same way he talks as, as Ross does. Um, which may be another reason that I just didn't really care for him. But with that all in mind, I think the technical aspects of this movie do a lot to buoy it, but the plot drags it down a little bit. But I also gave it a five. It's okay. Going in, I kind of wishy-washy on it, like a six out of ten. And on my second viewing, I actually really enjoyed it. I could definitely see this. And maybe it's just because it, it plays it pretty seriously, to be honest. But I could definitely see this like plot today, the same exact plot, the same exact movie today. But if you put somebody who is more of a goofy character than Dustin Hoffman, I don't know, like a John Mulaney or somebody who who just has like a goofy instinct a as the same character, I think it plays much more like straight comedy. Because just the, the plot and the things that happen itself are just like outlandish. Like... Oh, he's preyed on by the, the older mom, but he also likes the daughter, and he's going to go to the ends of the earth to get the daughter and betray everybody and steal her from her frat boy husband. and all, Like, it's just... It's like a goofy movie, in essence. Um, that said, I do think, and maybe it's just the climate that we're in now, that it maybe didn't age as well some of Ben's characteristics um, and things that he does. Uh, Mrs. Mrs. Robinson just being a manipulative person. Um, but I do think it is a really great movie. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to bump it up to a seven out of 10. I think this is one that you should watch. It, it is a classic through and through. Um, and maybe like Zach said, we'll, we'll see a remake, um, something to revitalize it for like our generation. Yeah. I think you touched on it. It could, it could be done as a comedy, but I just think when some of those things happen, do more with the music or the score or something to cue the audience in that it's supposed to be okay to laugh at this. Give me a laugh. I feel track. like I feel like this movie at times was like <laughs> Make it the Big Bang to, Theory and ten out of ten. <laughs> well, like you're supposed to find this funny, but like also the music's really somber and everything, the tone in that's really serious. It's like, well, it's kinda hard to find this amusing like with everything going on but i do agree if they kind of put maybe a different lead actor in there to kind of portray it a little bit more and just kind of slightly altered some of the tone of the direction would definitely make this a comedy that i feel like people would love give me matt damon and better music and this movie's a 10 out of 10 i don't know like obviously i said it's a dramedy um but it's like eighth grade. I don't know if you guys have seen that movie. That movie touches on like borderline rape or sexual assault. Uh, Book smart touches on like sexuality and that sort of things. So like some of these dramedies do touch on these like subjects that are a little, uh, I don't know, edgier. I, I don't want to say that because it's not like you're telling like an edgy joke, but it's like, there is heart and there is like actual things in these movies. And that's, kind of, I feel like that's what this is going for, but it just doesn't like, it doesn't play and doesn't hit like it, it should. I don't know. We need Bo Burnham to direct it and everything would be fine. <laughs> he could do the score too. Oh my God. It would or be Dimitri great. Martin. <laughs> you save so much money. <laughs> Dimitri Martin. We're just going to have Jesus. Weezer cover Simon and Garfunkel for the score. Oh, God. God. The only thing worse than Weezer is Weezer covering somebody else. I was going to say Weezer covering Bo Burnham. As Mrs. Yeah. Robinson walks in the room, Hey, I'm Bo Yo. <laughs> I'm the greatest rapper ever. ever. And I love you whether you think I'm clever or not. I think you better you're not. Let's get John LeJoie in here to do the music. Oh for my it. God, John LeJoie! Show me your genitals. Your genitals. <laughs> what? Show me your what? genitals. Ben Genital. Braddock. It becomes a becomes a musical. <laughs> oh God! Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, hopefully you do. Hopefully something comes out of this. 
It's all over the place. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens in post. If not, at least it was <laughs> educational. <laughs> Check us out on Instagram at Cocktails and Classics Pod. Subscribe and follow us. Use the hashtag Cocktails and Classics to send us your movie and drink recommendations. And as always, watch responsibly.